What's up everybody? Tim Humphreys here and I got another GoPro tutorial for you guys. Um, today we are going to be talking about 1440p, 960p, why they're awesome, and most importantly, what do we do with them once we film them on our camera and put them on our computer. So, so let's get into the few clips that I have. So we got this POV shot and we have a follow cam shot that me and my boy BJ shot at Squaw Valley this spring. Karma Grip follow cam. I'm going to show you guys uh, some things you can do with all these styles of shots. We're going to open up GoPro Studio and we are going to select our clips. So here we are, we're in GoPro Studio, and just to show you guys what I mean by 4x3 and there's all these numbers I'm talking about, so let's say this white box right here, this is 16x9, this is normally what you would see, you know, anything on TV right now, it's your normal standard HD widescreen, 1080p, 4K, you hear all those numbers, that's all 16x9. 4x3 is actually on the GoPro a taller field of view, because the GoPro sensor is actually 4x3. So when you record 1080p or 4K or any of the 16x9 modes, doesn't matter how many pixels wide and tall they are, it'll always be this field of view and you'll lose some on the top and bottom. So why I prefer the 4x3 modes when I shoot action, obviously, is you get the top and bottom because you lose somebody out of the frame on the top and the bottom. You can correct it and put them back in and you also see the most too so it's like you don't lose your, your feed or you don't lose the horizon and you just have more to work with and there's actually some techniques which I'm about to show you right now where you can take this and turn it into this and not lose any of this so alright so the first things first the POV this is one of the easier workflows um, when I post it Instagram I just leave it square because I have the tall format to work with but for anything else like YouTube any other 16x9 format which is pretty much most of them except for like Instagram um, you really need to be able to have it squeezed in. So we're gonna go to the beginning of this shot. All right, um, we'll just cut out a little section to work with here. Right, that looks good. And then somewhere on the ride out. And then let's go to change directory down here and let's make ourselves put the file somewhere where we know where they are. Because otherwise it'll just put it into the last folder that you had. Alright, so I'm going to Let's choose this folder that I have all the tutorial stuff in. And drag it over. Once I drag it to the search bar right here, it just selects it. I can hit save. Alright. So I'm going to go to advanced settings and check this box. Remember settings for future clips. Keep this one to high. And here for the image size, notice how it says 1920 by 1440. I'm going to change this to 1080p and make sure this box is checked, make 16 by 9. And we're going to hit OK and we're going to add that clip to the conversion list. And then let's just convert this one too while we're at it by clicking the convert button over here on the right. What we're going to get right now is a converted video that's in the GoPro codec that plays nice on an editor, but it's squished down already so we still need to do something more to it and that's where GoPro Studio really flexes some of its power and we go to the step 2 edit pane once it's done cancel on that and then now we see our clip is here um, you know we can mess around see how it's kind of squished looking compared to what it normally looks like you know that looks pretty tall that's pretty squished you know make this a little bit bigger so before we do any color correcting any stuff like that we can do that all here you know we're gonna go to the framing tab down here this is the important part for the 4x3 and this really only works with POV and time lapses um, like follow cams and selfie stuff, you kind of see the distortion a little bit more because there's like a body up close and you notice it. But here it's image, things far away and landscapes and POV, it actually really works well. We have this image, it's squished, it's all squished down right now. We're going to go to the uh, H dynamic right over here. We're going to drag this slider to this little tick mark right here. And it straightens everything back out. That is it set your colors, everything else, and then 
no need to save it or anything like that. It just it's like the color correction. It applies it to the metadata of the clip, and then if you go into Finder and you go to your exported version, which is this one right here, you'll see that it is fixed. It's not squished down anymore. The dynamic zoom is applied to it. No need to save nothing. So then you take that, you throw it in your editor, and then you cut it up like any normal clip. And you can also do that with time lapses too. This is the original, and I really like it, but I kind of like having all this space and extra stars and like having this little bottom to the frame. Otherwise, if I had it in a 16x9, you know, it'd be cut off like across there and across there. So what I actually do with some of my time lapses is I do that same dynamic stretch. So see how it fits like that, it's just as wide, but it's the whole the whole thing still fit in. So I don't know if you guys watched this little 2016 B-Sides edit or my Dirtwire uh, music video for the song Yes, but you might notice this uh, nighttime laughs from that right there. Um, so yeah, just another cool thing you can do with it. You know, it's not just for POV, you can do it for, you know, uh, landscapes and stuff like that too. It's really cool, especially when you're shooting the stars, because you want as many stars as you can up in the top of the frame and it just gives you it gives you that whole extra view now for the clips that require a little bit more work in post-production you know than just doing the little squish here and a stretch there so here we're gonna take the follow cam shot and drop that in Again, I'm just gonna clip out a small section of just me riding into the jump and hitting it that was awesome awesome So here, we are going to leave it at the source, 1920 by 1440. This is one that we don't want to stretch. And add that to the conversion list. Uh, right. While we are waiting for the Eclipse to just finish up converting, let's uh, open up a sequence in Adobe Premiere. And so here I have a um, sequence preset for 1080p. So clip's done converting, got a sequence open. Let's drop this 1440p clip that we have into this 1080p sequence. Uh, keep existing settings. You want to leave the clip as 1440, keep the sequence as 1080, and I'll show you why in a second. Let's drag this back into our work area, and let's just zoom out on it a little bit. So you can see this bounding box right here. This is the actual size of the clip, but 1080p is this. So if you were to actually, if I were to film this exact same thing in 1080p on the camera, this is what I would see. But when I film 1440, I have all this extra room to play with, and I can mess around with that in the effects control panel. So click effects control, twirl down motion, and then you use the X, Y coordinates and position. So see how I can put my head back in you know, see the bottom of my body. And then let's scrub through the clip a little bit more and kind of see what we see. So let's uh, let's reset that real quick. So one thing I noticed when I was previewing it is right here. Notice how I fully get cut off. Like if we were filming this in 1080p up on the hill right there, that shot would have been 100% blown, unusable, like, you know, that's just, I wouldn't use it, I wouldn't run it, I would have had to do the Switchback 9 again. And even though we're sitting down doing a little bit of work here, it basically gives you an extra layer of insurance while you're out on the hill, at least for me it does, when I'm filming, where I can just, you know, do a little whoop, like that, and I am back in business. Alright, so this is what I do to all these types of clips. So yeah, I like the horizon, looking good. Oh, see how I got out of the frame right there a little bit? Luckily we have this extra space to work with, and we can account for that. So what you need to do is make some keyframes and animate the motion. So you twirl down this motion uh, tab in the effects controls right here, and you toggle animation on the uh, position scale. So we're going to start a keyframe, you know, the last good zone that we were in, and then I'm going to put another keyframe right where I uh, leave the frame with my board, and then it gets good again right back here, so let's put another keyframe. I'm going to just jump back to this middle keyframe here using the left arrow, 
And I'm just going to grab this little cider guy and be like, hey, we need you down here for a second. So that's, that's looking pretty good. Let's get rid of the old, the old look through right there. Sometimes you got to mess around with it and look at it. You know, smooth it out a little bit. And then let's go back to here. That's looking pretty good. So yeah, that's one of the many nice uses for the 4x3 modes. Uh, it's pretty convenient being able to put your head and feet back in when you cut them out. And yeah, it's definitely it's something I use all day, every day. I love the 4x3 modes, like 1440 is my jam. And this is basically what I do to a lot of the clips that I edit in YouTube or need anything for 16x9. A little bit more work on the computer, but it's way less work than having to try a trick again. So. You know, I like it. Keep it lean and mean on the hill and get the shots. Big shout out to my sponsors, Flow Snowboards, GoPro, GoPole, Bolay. Thank you guys for keeping me in it. Till next time, happy GoProing. Get out there and get some shots.